given the modulus function, f of x is equal to ax minus b, where a and b are positive constants, and then the graph of y equals fx plus c. So we're applying a transformation to the original, has a vertex at 3, 1, and crosses the y-axis at 0, 7, and we're asked to find a, b, and c. I think it's time to get a sketch down. So I'm just going to draw the original modulus function and then we'll apply the transformation. Okay, so ax minus b is going to have a critical point. Critical point is going to be x is equal to b over a. So let's put it here. And then when x is 0, I'm going to get minus b the modulus of, so it's going to go through b. I don't really know the relative sizes at the moment, but it's still, this is a, a decent sketch. Now I'm going to add C to it. And so if C is positive, it's going to, which it ends up being, it's going to be translated in the Y direction. Maybe look a bit like that instead. And let's think about what's going to happen to the point. So this one here is going to become b plus c because I'm just taking my value that I had and then adding c to it. And originally this was um, b over a zero but when I add c to it here it's going to become b over a c. Right and that it really gets um, this question going because we can see that c has to equal one. Originally the vertex was at zero, now it's at one. I suppose you don't even need to kind of do what I've done, but I think it's quite a good way of doing it. Um, and if C is one, and it goes through the y-axis now at seven, then that means B plus C is seven, C is one, so B is gonna be six. And then finally, B over A is equal to three, but now we know that B is six. So 6 over a is 3, we can see that a is going to equal 2, and there we go. Part 2, we're asked to explain why the inverse of f does not exist. Now for a function to have an inverse, it has to be 1 to 1, because that means when you swap it around, it's like the output and the input, it's still 1 to 1. Whereas if you have a many to 1 function, is absolutely fine and when you swap it around you get it becomes one to many this is not a function something like y equals x squared doesn't have an inverse and the same is true here same kind of shape so we don't need to go into lots of detail on this we just need to say f of x is not one to one you could explain that two values give the same value of y but it's enough just to say it's not one to one g of x is then defined as the same function, but x is greater or equal, well not this quite the same function because we've got p and q instead, but the same sort of thing, but x is now greater or equal to q over p. Okay, so what that is going to mean is, uh, actually let me draw it over here. Now we've still, we've got a critical point at q over p but we're only going to have this part. So this is y equals g of x. And then we're asked to find in terms of p and q an expression for the inverse, stating the domain of the inverse. So the domain of the inverse is actually the range of the original function. It's worth looking into that. We can see from the graph that g of x is always going to be greater or equal to zero. Now to find the inverse, I'm going to let y equal. Now I don't need to let it equal the modulus of px minus q because I can see I've gone beyond the critical point and actually it's just the same thing but without the modulus. It's only if I included the ones to the left of the critical point that the modulus function would kick in. So I'm actually finding the inverse of this function. I'm going to make x the subject because I'm going from y through some sort of function machine to get to x. And the inverse is when you go the opposite way. So I'm going to make x the subject. 
px is equal to y plus q. That means x is y plus q over p. But to write it as the inverse, we then put it back in terms of x. So the inverse is equal to x plus q over p. And the domain is going to be that x is greater or equal to 0. Because like I said before, it's the same as the range of the original function. Now, I just want to talk about this. It doesn't really come up in the question, but the inverse is a reflection of the original function in y equals x. Let me just change the color. So what we would get for the inverse is something that looks a bit like this. Oh, it's not going to be dotted. A bit like this. And they all intersect at y equals x. Now, I've got to be honest, I think this part two is quite tough. I, the, the, in the solutions, they just write the answer straight down. I can't quite see where they've got it from. I um, Maybe I overcomplicated it, but I'm going to show you what I did. You can tell me if, uh, if there's an easier way. So we're going to take the original function, px minus q, and we're going to set it equal to the inverse. You could also set it equal to equal to x, which is sometimes a good method for, for finding out where they intersect, but I'm not sure it really helps here. And then I decided to make x the subject. So I could times through by p, p squared x minus pq is equal to x plus q. And then to make x a subject or solve in terms of x, I'm going to get p squared x minus x is equal to pq plus q. That means that x times p squared minus 1 is equal to q p plus 1. So x is going to be q p plus 1 over p squared minus 1, but I could write that as p plus 1 times p minus 1 and cancel it down. a couple of things to say here. So actually, the only way that you wouldn't get a point of intersection between these two lines is if p was equal to 1, because then you'd get um, parallel lines. They would never intersect. So the other values actually come in because we have to have um, p and q as positive. And so the function's got to intercept when it's positive. Uh, when p well, like a positive coordinate, and therefore we require p minus one to be greater than zero, and therefore p must be greater than one. So the question actually says where there's no solutions. In the question, they specify that p is going to be uh, has to be positive, so you don't have to do. So there's no solutions for p less than or equal to 1. You get away with that. I'm just going to throw in the 0 as well. So p, because we've said uh, that p has to be positive, so there's no solutions if it's between uh, just above 0 or yeah, less than or equal to 1. That's going to be my full answer. But I just want to say again, I think like as long as you write that, then you're OK. Right, awkward, I think, and I would really like to hear a quicker way to do it um, because that did feel quite complicated for one mark.